Right. Well, there's increasing evidence and support within Australia that our future could be nuclear, with other renewable technologies really not stacking up to provide the bulk of our economic needs. Of course, many, me included, want to see next generation coal and gas technologies used as well. A return to common sense, if you like, after the madness of the last few years and a recognition that we should use our resources here to keep powering up our industries and keeping household prices down just as willingly as we ship them overseas for others to use. Queensland Nationals MP Keith Pitt and his Senate colleague James McGrath are behind a renewed federal push on nuclear energy. And they join me now here in Canberra. Great to have you on the show, gentlemen. Glad to be here. Now, Keith, no um, issues with James's experience as a political expert, but you are the one who was the engineering expert, electrical engineering by trade, before you came into this place. Um, why are you now so determined? You spoke out on the issue of energy in the last term of parliament. You are now really, obviously, internally focused to get this thing moving inside the coalition. Why? Oh, well, I think I've been consistent uh, since I arrived in 2013, Peter. I'm, look, I spoke against the RET because, in my view, it would put up power prices, it would make the electricity network less reliable, it would be paid for by the poorest people, and I think that's actually exactly what's happened. So, regardless of whether you support baseload through Healy Coal, or whether it's gas, I think we need to look at every single opportunity, and nuclear certainly presents one. So, I think the technology's moved on. Uh, I think with small modular reactors, the potential for thorium, uh, there are all sorts of opportunities for us to generate energy from a nuclear reactor. I think it's time for us to have a look at it. And I think the mob are with us. I really think there's strong support out there. It's been raised with me any number of times now over a number of years. The point I made before about your political sense, James, is really true. I mean, you've years in campaigning before you even came into Parliament. Have you seen a shift in mood from Australians that they are willing to at least have the debate? They want to have the debate. They want us to talk about it at an adult level. And it's interesting, I agree with Keith. I've been going around Queensland and people have been coming up to me since Keith first raised this issue and I've, I'm you know, supporting him on this. They want us and they're so happy that people are out there pushing the issue of, of nuclear energy as a possible energy source for Australia. They want us to do it. We've got to take them on the journey with us mm -hmm. and we've got to have that conversation. That's why we, you know, Keith and I think there should be a Senate inquiry in terms of look at, look at the economics of it, look at, at what can happen uh, with nuclear energy and, and I think we can get people over the line with it. And your intention would be to take this inquiry right around the country so people could attend meetings, they could speak their mind? I think that would be, would be up to, to the committee itself to decide that if, if it gets up in, in the Senate. But yes, you'd want to go out there and you'd want it to be a long inquiry and make sure that people fully understand the ramifications and the benefits of nuclear energy. Keith Pitt, it always it makes me smile when people say, oh, but it'll take us 10 to 15 years to do a nuclear industry, it's, you know, it takes too long to get it up and running. But of course, we've waited 10 years for an NBN. Uh, we'll wait 30 plus years for submarines. It's a bit like that Irish joke, if you want to get to Dublin, I wouldn't start from here. Well, you've got to start sometime, don't you, if you want to build a nuclear industry. Can we do it? Do we have the, the um, number of people required with physics backgrounds and nuclear backgrounds, or do we have to really train up that cohort of people to run an industry? Well, the short answer is, of course we can. I mean, this is the greatest nation in the world. It really is. Our people are just as smart as everyone else. Yes, it'll take uh, some time to build the cohort, to build the technology, to build the support services. The Institution of Engineers advice is, you know, that could well be up to 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, but the reality is we have to make a start. Uh, and I think James makes a very good point. We need to bring people with us. Uh, I think the younger generation in particular are very well informed. Uh, they, can, you know, they grab their phone, they can look up anything they want at any time of the day or night. They're incredibly supportive because in their view, uh, there's nothing more important than doing something about climate change. Uh, and everyone's been banging around looking for a solution for many, many years now. Well, here's one. Mm. So if it's economically viable, uh, if it's environmentally viable, if we have the support of the Australian people, well, then clearly it is an option that we need to investigate. I think most Australians will have been touched by cancer uh, with someone that they love at some time in their lives. A lot of cancer treatments involve nuclear medicine. We have a real issue, don't we, in this country about where we store the waste from nuclear medicine? Oh, we do, and you know, my good wife is actually a radiographer, so it's something I hear about regularly. So we've got an issue with nuclear waste now. Now, it has to be addressed. We, we need to find a storage a facility for uh, waste from nuclear medicine in particular. Uh, and you know, let, let's just be common sense about this. We need it in Australia. 
Uh, we need it sooner rather than later, and we have to get a solution. So whilst that can run concurrently, uh, it can also be a solution for what we are looking at in terms of the Senate Select Committee, about whether we use nuclear energy or not. So I think you know, the nuclear waste argument is a bit of a... Threat. You mean put it inside the terms of reference so that there is a discussion not just about nuclear energy, uh, but also the corollary, I guess, of nuclear waste? Oh, of course. We need to look at all stages of the cycle, uh, you know, including what it may well cost, depending on which type of technology, what you do with the waste. And once again, that also depends on the technology, uh, whether you look for thorium reactors or SMRs. Uh, there's a whole range of things out there now which give you different outcomes in terms of the end of the cycle. But the bottom line is we have an issue with waste now uh, that needs to be fixed. What do we do with our waste now? Uh, well, at the moment, my understanding is it's actually stored in little locations all around the country, which are almost at bursting point. Uh, and that's risky in itself? It is. Uh, it's the reason there was a Royal Commission in South Australia to look at a nuclear waste facility there. I my understanding there's proposals at WA as well, which could potentially be utilised. Uh, but once again, this needs to run concurrently with whatever inquiry we may or may not get up. So mm. I, I think to use it as an argument against the inquiry, uh, I just think that's nonsense. James McGrath, this isn't an exercise in trying to embarrass the government into doing something. You're, you're trying to deal with questions legitimately out there with, with everyday voters who mm. say we've got to do something about energy. Uh, nuclear is baseload. We ship our uranium overseas. Why on earth can't we at least have a conversation about having a nuclear power industry for this country? A lot of the experts now are coming forward to say we should have nuclear on the table. Um, are you wedded to what sort of inquiry it would be if the Prime Minister said, well, I like a little bit of this, or I like a little bit of that, or I prefer it done a different way? No, uh, Keith and I aren't wedded to what type of inquiry it would be. We'd prefer it to be a, a parliamentary inquiry. Mm -hmm. We would prefer it to, to go around the country, prefer it to be a serious inquiry to get uh, evidence from and take submissions from, from the experts. So we're quite open to that. In our letter to the Prime Minister that we sent last week, mm -hmm. uh, there's, we actually say that in the letter, we're open to, to uh, questions about uh, the mechanism and the timing. Just on this issue of um, Healy power, a lot of talk, a lot of people on your side of politics who want to see next generation coal-fired power in this country. And I have to say, a lot of reports are now coming out to say around the world that renewables are not going to fill this gap as they perhaps thought, people thought they would. Are we going to see a heli station in Australia anytime soon? I, I would hope so. Cause, but Australians are a pretty, pretty sensible mob. They, they look at the fact that we've got all this coal and we're digging it up and we're sending it overseas. They look, we've got all this gas and we're sending it overseas. They look at, they know we've got a third of the world's uranium that goes overseas. And, and why can't we uh, have a discussion about nuclear power, but in terms of other energy sources? Because there is this cult of the, the windmill, the cult of, of the solar panel, and people think that it's free. Mm -hmm. It's not. They think it's, uh, um, it, it's clean. It's not necessarily clean in terms of some of the waste that comes out of that also. Um, I can't answer that question, and that's very, a very sad thing for me to admit. I want us to. Uh, the people I speak to want us to. Keith, Peter, there's one issue that I'm stopped in the street about, and this is about coal-fired power, having a next-generation sort of generator in Australia built to order, uh, like, you know, 1,100 of them or so are being built around the world. James's point is spot on there. When I was overseas and I met with Adani, Mr Adani, the chairman, said, if we don't burn your clean coal, we'll burn dirty coal from somewhere else like Indonesia, and they'll get the money, not you in Australia, and the environment overall will be harmed. Why aren't we burning our good coal here? Why aren't we doing something more about uh, utilising domestic gas? Do we think we're going to resolve these issues in this parliament? Well, I think it's the fundamental constitutional question because ultimately the states are responsible. Uh, we, we can't build anything in this country without the state's approval. Uh, but, you know, to the point you made to James, <laughs> there's a location already. It's called Vales Point. Right, Trevor and Baker is ready to build a heli coal power plant right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think people should get out of the way and let him get on with that because, in my view, uh, Victoria will have some very challenging circumstances coming into summer to maintain supply. We already have heli coal plants uh, in Queensland. Uh, certainly, Cogan Creek, one of the most recently built, uh, is yes. a heli plant. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about heli plants, you know, they, they're, just, they're a high pressure boiler, so they're, you know, they're low emissions, they're high efficiency. And the best thing you can, you can do with any coal fired power station is run them at 100% capacity. You actually get more megawatts for less emissions if they're flat out. Uh, and yet we find that we've got you know, so many things going in with intermittent wind and solar that are putting them out of business. Right, that, that's the reality. All right, I had a good look at the program today. I have to say, you, you gentlemen are having a bit of a light week. Um, you'll be sworn in tomorrow. The 46th Parliament will start uh, Keith Pitt. But uh, Wednesday's taken up with condolence motions for Bob Hawke. 
The same in the Senate. Just quickly, do we think we're going to get this motion up this week or will it be next time Parliament sits? Uh, I think the priority this week might be getting the tax cuts through. Let, let's, well, we, I think that's right, yes. Let's get, the, let's get the tax cuts through first. Look, I'm going to lodge the motion on Wednesday to be dealt with on, on Thursday, but it's subject to what happens in terms of the sitting schedule on Thursday right. because there might be an hours motion there to use a bit of technical ease. Yes. OK, well, well, I'll keep an eye on it for everyone at home. James McGrath, thank you thank for your you. time. Keith Pitt. Glad to be with you. Yep.